A DB9 is 80% of a DBS, but for half the money, buy a DB9. I could be quoted as saying this numerous times over the last few years. I owned a DB9 for two years, 12,000 miles, and I loved it. But today's a bit awkward because a very generous channel subscriber has let me borrow their DBS. The DBS was my dream, Aston Martin, and oh my goodness, look how beautiful it is. Right, nope, today I'm not gonna be stubborn about what I've said in the past, but equally, I'm not gonna be swayed by recency bias because I've got this DBS today. At the end of this video, I'll give you my verdict. Is the DB9 the one to buy? Or is the DBS worth all that extra cash? Come on, let's find out. My name's Ben, welcome to Dad Cars. Should we switch it on? Yeah. This is even louder than Daddy's DB9 was. Do you want to hear it? Open the door. Open the door? <laughs> I love that that's become a thing that you always say. <laughs> I've dreamt about this since I was 18 and I saw this car in Casino Royale. When you <sighs> was little? Mm. In fact, more on that later, because I'm probably going to upset some DBS owners when I say something a bit later on. So, sweetie, straight away, this obviously feels quite familiar to us, doesn't it? Because we lived two years with that DB9, did 12,000 miles. But what's different? So, in here, you've got the piano black, beautiful waterfall dash coming down here and all of these surround parts and this bottom section here is also piano black which looks so much better i actually wish that mine had that but mine was aluminium and although you would think that that would make it less prone to scratches mine aluminium one did have a couple of scratches i think also in here you've got contrast stitching which honestly really does make a difference on these astons because most of them were specs like this you know just with black interior so having the contrast stitching is massive in here as well you've got adaptive dampers which you did not get on db9s until a couple of years after this oh god yeah i mean this is a particularly bad section of road but <laughs> oh god but do not want to hit pothole when you're in this mode Jesus. So I understand what Aston Martin were doing with the DBS, you know, they're trying to make the most extreme one, the one that could be, you know, perform the best on a track. But in reality, I'm sure that 95 plus percent of people who bought these cars never intended on really taking them on a track. Honestly, this in the comfort mode is perfect. You know, it's, it's nice and firm. You feel extremely planted on the road. So locked in with this aluminium chassis. And so in comfort setting, look, correct me if I'm wrong, but I reckon most DBS owners just don't click that adaptive damper button, they leave it like this. So this car could have actually been better if you pressed that and then it sort of softened everything out and made it, you know, even more comfortable at continent crushing. You've also got a pen down here. Look, sweetie, look at this pen. I can't see. Oh, hang on a second. Right, we're coming some speed bumps. Okay, hang on. Now I know <laughs> that my DB9 was okay going up this. Oh God, I've already regretted it coming up here. This is uh, this is this is really stressful. Look, so I had a sports pack DB9, which which I think is about six millimeters lower than the standard DB9, and it could take these speed bumps okay. And it should be the same with this, but oh, I think I'm just so conscious of the carbon fiber and because it's not mine as well obviously oh right i have driven countless cars up here for reviews and this is the slowest i'm going over these speed bumps this steering wheel feels just so perfect in my hand i mean visually looking at it it just looks like it's got some perforated lever there at the top but I don't know, unless I'm going crazy. Oh, this just feels perfection, the size of it. Oh, and these seats have got a mixture of leather and Alcantara. And whilst Alcantara is not a good thing for a dad car, you know, Alcantara children don't mix, this does feel more comfortable. Do you want to feel a little bit of acceleration? Yeah? Just a little bit of acceleration. Are you ready? What's this?
Right, we will get back to the driving in just a second, but because this is the Dad Cars channel, we've always got to check out oh, rear practicality. Oh, and oh, in case you haven't seen any of my videos on my former DB9, the back of these 2 plus 2 Aston Martins is among the most cramped of all 2 plus 2s really, but it is still possible to get child seats in the back. The child seats that I used with my children in my DB9 a couple of years ago, they don't make those seats anymore, but there are still options available. This car's owner has found this solution. I mean, there is gonna be just about enough there for my little pickle today. But there's something very cool that you can do in this DBS that I could not do in my DB9. Look, it's got a front passenger side airbag deactivation switch, which means, according to the little sign on there, you can switch the passenger side airbag off and put a rear facing child seat in the front. My DB9 of the same year did not have this. Now look, I'll be fascinated. Let me know in the comments below. If you've got a DB9, DBS, do you have this? Go and check it on your car now. Do you have it? Because maybe was it an option on certain cars? I really want to get to the bottom of this. But honestly, that really opens up usability of this car as a dad car. And I'm also pleased to confirm the boot is big enough to take a folding buggy with look space in there for other family items as well. Look, quick note as well while we're here, this is obviously carbon fiber. On my DV9, it was aluminium, so it was quite a lot heavier but it feels like the gas struts are the same for both because my DB9, if you dropped it, it would slam so hard because it was heavier. Whereas on the DBS, these gas struts seem perfect. Now let's get back to the driving, shall we? So just very quickly then, these VH platform 2 plus 2 Aston Martins began in 2004 with the DB9. And the launch DB9 came with 450 brake horsepower. And then the DBS was launched in 2008. And at launch, it only came with a manual transmission. But I believe very quickly, due to popular demand, Aston Martin started offering this automatic ZF torque converter transmission as well. And this is the same Touchtronic 2 that I had in my glass key DB9. Because shortly after the DBS was launched, the DB9 got a refresh. Around late 2008, the DB9 then started coming with this upgraded waterfall dash that you see here, DBS style wing mirror stalks. The slats on the front grille were changed to match that of the DBS. Although on the DBS, the grille is a different design, sort of follows that more aggressive look with the front grille as well. Right, sweetie, we are coming up to national speed limit. Do you, want to, do you want to feel how fast this is? Yeah. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. What do you think of that? Good. Oh God, I miss the sound of that V12. I really, really do. But, but obviously this is the same V12 that is in the DB9, in my DB9. Right, sweetie, we're going to pull over here and just do another little launch, I think. Obviously, we never go crazy on the Dad Cars channel because we've got pickles on board. But we'll do a bit of a... Yeah, but right, you ready, sweetie? Head back. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's definitely a lot more ferocious than, you know, my DB9, the 470 class key DB9 was from Standard. However, some of you may have seen a video that I posted recently. My good friend James over at JM on Cars took the DB9 over to Bamford Rose and they gave it the full Bamford Rose works. So I think I've been a bit spoiled having driven that Bamford Rose works DB9 that was probably mine recently. You know, if I'd gone from how my car was before to driving this, it would have been even more noticeable. So the power difference between a comparable DB9 and a DBS is less than 10%. Oh. Oh. Goodness me, got a death wish. Could you imagine if that hit into the carbon fiber front splitter at speed? Oh God. Oh. Anyway, what was I saying? So on paper, you know, just under a 10% power increase over the comparable DB9. But at launch, I think these were 50 grand more than the DB9. But what about today? Well, I looked at the classifieds this morning and it seems that prices at the moment in the UK for DBSs sort of start at around 60,000 pounds for higher mile cars, cars that look like they've got more owners and whatnot. 
and then cars with lower mileage that are being sold by Aston Martin approved used themselves, they're sort of 80 and above thousand pounds. And then obviously if you want a manual, you'll pay a premium on top of that as well. And funny enough, if you half those amounts, that is pretty much what you're looking at for a 470 glass key revision DB9. You know, high mile, sort of questionable looking examples you can see up for you know, around 30,000 pounds. And then if you buy one from Aston Martin themselves of lower miles, you know, you'd be paying over 40,000 for it. It would be automotive malpractice for me to review an Aston Martin DBS without mentioning Casino Royale and Daniel Craig. However, think about it. Here's a shocker for you. Casino Royale came out in 2006. The DBS wasn't even unveiled until 2007 and then released in 2008. So technically, the Aston Martin that Daniel Craig drove in Casino Royale was a DB9 with a body kit. I'm sorry, no, look, I love playing devil's advocate, but no, I, I, I can't keep a straight face of, with that argument. I just can't. I mean, look, I was 18 when Casino Royale came out. This car that I'm driving right now, 18 years later, I mean, this is a dream. I've ever seen this in the film and it is burnt, is etched into the tissue of my brain. So no, yeah, look, this car is far too important to me and a generation of petrol heads that are a similar age to me. Um, I, can't, I can't stick with that argument, I'm sorry. <laughs> If you're just looking at pictures of these things on your phone, look, flicking through the classifieds, you'd be forgiven for thinking, that, oh, look, yeah, the DBS is just a DB9 with a body kit. But honestly, trust me, when you actually see one in the flesh, spend some time up close with them, particularly if you are somebody who knows your way around a DB9 and spent some time, has owned one yourself before, you realize that it's much more than that. Honestly, it feels like every single panel on this car is different. Obviously, you've got that far more aggressive front end and side skirts and the rear diffuser, but it's also the carbon fiber boot lid with that all important, more pronounced boot spoiler, which honestly makes such a difference to the way that these cars sort of look and sit at certain angles. And this car is in quantum silver, which is actually, I think, one of the best looking colors for these Astons. It looks almost black, but in certain lights, you can see the depth of the incredible Aston Martin paint also the iconic carbon fiber bonnet with the additional vents and let me tell you the additional ventilation is required the heat that you can see rippling off the front of these v12 astons is insane and this car wears the later diamond cut alloys which i much prefer the earlier ones but also the front wings which are now carbon fiber i believe before they were composite on the db9 they're not the same they're slightly more flared, more aggressive, and honestly, take it from me, I would love to say that this is simply a DB9 with, with a body kit thrown on it, but it's not. Right, and this is fascinating, okay? My wife is now holding the camera. What did you just say when you saw this car for the first time? That it's a lot nicer than your DB9. That is a lot nicer than my DB9. I honestly thought that my wife was gonna say it just looks the same as your other one, but she said it looks a lot nicer than the DB9. I wasn't expecting that. All the carbon fiber and everything else they did what's the weight saving figure over the db9 well i think it's about 65 kilograms so if you're driving your db9 with your other half on the passenger side and you'd like to feel what it would feel like driving a dbs in terms of the weight saving all you got to do is pull into the nearest lay-by kick your wife out and then just go for a little blast and then come back and pick her up that's <laughs> that's basically how much lighter the dbs is over the db9 Oh, look, there really is something about a V12 that makes my little pickle fall asleep. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she did grow up, literally grow up. She was a baby when I bought my DB9. The DBS is as well, I believe, the first Aston Martin that came with carbon ceramic brakes. So I was quite interested in driving this today to see if they were a bit grabby or squeaky or, or whatnot. But maybe it's because the car was already warm by the time I, I took it, because we did the drive-by first this morning. But they just feel very, very intuitive. And obviously I'm, I'm not gonna get a chance to really slam them on because um, <laughs> little pickles are asleep now. This car has also got the desirable B&O sound system with the rising tweeters up there on the dash. And you might be thinking, what's the point in that? You know, what's the point in the 
emotional control unit what's the point in the doors coming up and you know all of the other sort of theatrics but that, 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 this car is all about that you know you don't buy this car because it's going to be the best thing around the Nürburgring you know you buy this car because it feels like nothing else you know you could drive a 997 turbo around at 20 30 miles an hour and you know just feel very civilized feel very much like a normal car you know and that look that's a compliment to the 911 so versatile but drive this car around at normal speeds drop it down a gear accelerate from 30 to 40 with moderate input <laughs> honestly it's just incredible everything about it Now, Aston Martins, for some reason, are very mileage sensitive, not quite as sensitive as Ferraris, but when you're looking at a car, what you should do is take the mileage and then sort of double it. Like if you see an Aston Martin with 40,000 miles on the clock, it's like the equivalent if you see any other car with 80,000 miles on the clock. And this car here today sits on just 17,000 miles. Now, obviously you will pay a little bit extra to get a car with low miles, but for me, normally a car that's been driven a lot and has stacks of paperwork is, I'd much rather have that over a car which has barely been driven in recent years, but is low miles. But you know, with these cars, having the carbon ceramics, I mean, there is some sort of logic actually in going for the lower owner car, lower mileage car. Because, yeah, look, you might save like 15 grand maybe buying a higher mile DBS that's got a stack of owners and, you know, a bit more of a questionable history. But if one of those owners had taken the DBS to a cheap car wash place and they'd sprayed chemicals all over the wheels at some point, you know, you could be faced with a bill of replacing your carbon ceramics, which could cost in excess of £15,000. So, yeah, I could kind of see a bit more logic in it with this this DBS and also this car's owner Matt he intends on using this car as much as possible with his family to make memories so if he does that over the next x amount of years you know the the mileage would still be sort of at a sensible level you know, the car would retain its value a bit more be a bit easier to sell <laughs> I need to say a massive thank you to Matt, the owner of this incredible DBS. Thank you so much for letting me drive this today. Matt is a dad himself. He's got two young children and he's figured out a way where him, his wife and his two children can all go out at weekends in this car. He only picked it up of January of this year, so a few months ago. And he said to me that it was my video series on the Dadcast channel with the DB9 that sort of helped him pull the trigger on this car. And honestly, I can't tell you how much that means to me. But honestly, Matt, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much of a dream it is for me to drive my dream Aston Martin here today <laughs> with my pickle in the back. <laughs> Look, what the Dad Cars channel is all about is buying the most exciting car you possibly can that you can comfortably afford and using it as much as possible with your children to make memories. That is what this channel is all about. But look, strong emphasis on comfortably afford because it is not fun owning a car which is stretching you financially. The memories that you make with your children, if you're feeling grumpy and stressed the whole time, no, that, that, that is not fun. So getting to spend the day with and drive this, my dream Aston Martin here, I look, I can confirm that a DB9, certainly a Sports Pack 470 glass key DB9 is 80% of a DBS for half the money, it is. And if you can, like I could at the time, I can't anymore, but at the time, comfortably afford to buy a DB9, even if the DBS is your dream, but it's just out of reach, go and buy a good DB9. And it's true as well with upgrades, you know, at a place like Banford Rose, you can make a DB9 perform just like this as well. But, and this is a huge but, think JLo and Kim Kardashian combined but, the last 20% that you get with the DBS is pure magic, pure perfection, Aston Martin perfection. Honestly, it's not as simple as just a body coat on it. Spend some time externally looking at it and the design work on this, like the aggressive little touches, the wideness at the front, wideness at the rear, all of it ties together to make this car just indescribably special. Yes, the dampers even in their comfort setting are even firmer than a DB9. Certainly now my DB9 has had brand new Bilstein dampers fitted. But just me, everything about this car, of course the sound as well. God, I haven't even mentioned the sound. It's all just perfection. Aston Martin perfection. 
And honestly, if you, like me, have this car etched into the fabric of your brain you know, when you drive it, even though in here, you could squint and be mistaken for being in a DB9 very easily, you're aware that you're not. You're in a DBS. You're in the car. And it just makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up even straighter. Honestly, ever since I started driving this, my heart has been beating at a slightly higher rate. And, you know, my cheeks are hurting now from smiling. And this car just means so much to me. And look, I understand if the DBS didn't have that impact on you at a formative age, you're not going to understand what I'm saying here. You know, because it's, it's, it, it goes beyond logic. It goes beyond like what you can quantifiably say makes this car better, makes this car more value for money. Like there's, there's, there's just Aston Martin magic in the DVS. It has to be arguably the, or at least one of the most iconic cars of my lifetime. And if you watching this get the chance to comfortably afford to buy a DVS, and it means to you what it means to me, you have to do it. You owe it to yourself. And if you don't, I guarantee you'll be 70, 80 one day and you'll look back and you'll think, I wish I listened to Ben. <sighs> if you're still watching this video now, I need you to subscribe to the channel. I need you to comment below. I need you to share this with somebody. Right? Oh, this channel has got to get bigger. The fact that this car is, was only bought by its dad owner because he saw something on the dad car's channel which helped him pull the trigger. I know there's lots of people out there that this is happening to. What we need to do with dad cars is we need to pull all of these people together. We need to all collectively work together and, and build our man math brains <laughs> so that we can live out our dreams and make incredible memories with our children because there's never been a more important time than right now. The next generation needs to understand and fall in love with these incredible internal combustion engine cars. When the next generation grow up, we need as many of them as possible to understand why a six liter naturally aspirated Aston Martin DBS is something that's so special and that we should continue to allow to be used on roads freely. That needs to happen. And it's my belief that the best way of doing that is making memories with the next generation in these special cars. Dad cars events, getting everybody together and encouraging children to see cars like this, sit in cars like this. And if you don't see the value in sharing these cars with the next generation, see you later. Leave a negative comment on your way out. But for everybody else, subscribe to the channel. I can't wait to see what we get on the channel next. Take care. Bye-bye.